Hello friends, my name is Amit Jyoti. I am an assistant professor with the OP Jindal Global University. Continuing from our last discussion, we will discuss a few more cases decided by the ICJ. In this module, we will first discuss the Corfu Channel case and another case concerning Barcelona Traction, Light and Power Company Limited. This case is famously referred to as the Barcelona Traction case. These cases are based on the contributions of the ICJ in development of the fundamental principles of international human rights law. The two fundamental concepts that developed through these two cases that I just mentioned are elementary considerations of humanity and obligations erga omnis. The term ergo omnis is the Latin phrase which means towards all. Now let's discuss the first case that is the Corfu Channel case between United Kingdom versus Albania. The judgment was given on 9th April 1949. This particular case arose out of an incident that occurred in the Albanian territorial waters of the Corfu Channel where Two British warships were struck by mines and they incurred heavy damage and loss to human life. In the relevant passage from this particular judgment of the ICJ, the court stated, and I quote, the obligations incumbent upon the Albanian authorities consisted of notifying for the benefit of the shipping in general the existence of a minefield in Albanian territorial waters and in warning the approaching British warships of the imminent danger to which the minefields exposed them. Such obligations are based on certain general and well-recognized principles, namely elementary considerations of humanity, even more exacting in peace than in war." Unquote. The use of the phrase elementary considerations of humanity by the court in this paragraph possibly indicates to the tenets of natural law whereby the ICJ insists that these rules need not be written down anywhere and that they are self-evident. It is also to be noted here that in this, ICJ never attempted to identify the contents or underlying norms of this phrase. This concept in the court's opinion seems to be grounded on moral ethics rather than a legal principle. And it places upon states an obligation to behave in a manner which takes into account basic human rights of people across the board. In this case, the court, after coining this term, in fact utilized this principle in several of its decisions later on. In the advisory opinion on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons, the ICJ stated, it is undoubtedly because of great many rules of humanitarian law applicable in armed conflict are so fundamental to the respect of human person and elementary considerations of humanity as the court put in the judgment of 9th April 1949 in the Corfu Channel case. These fundamental rules are to be observed by all states whether or not they have ratified the conventions that contain them because they constitute intransgressible principles of international customary law. In the legal consequences of the construction of a wall in the occupied Palestinian territory case, the ICJ recalled the elementary considerations of humanity and it held that these rules incorporate obligations which are essentially of an ergo omnis character. Thereafter, in, this, in the case concerning military and paramilitary activities in and against Nicaragua, 
which was a case between Nicaragua and United States of America. The court held that the rules of elementary considerations of humanity consist of elaborate rules which are also to apply to international conflicts. The next case is uh, concerning Barcelona Traction Light and Power Company Limited between Belgium and Spain of the year 1958 to 61 and then again 62 to 70. The judgment came on 5th of February 1970. The Barcelona Traction Light and Power Company Limited was corporation incorporated in Canada that had set up a power production and distribution system in Spain. Majority of its shares were owned by Belgian nationals. Sometime prior to the Spanish Civil War in 1936, the company had issued bonds to non-Spanish investors. However, during the Spanish Civil War, the Spanish government refused to allow the company to transfer currency to pay its bondholders the interest they were due. The bondholders sued the company for default and this led to the selling off of the business of the company, that is the Barcelona company. To protect the interest of the shareholders of the company, Belgium in this case sued Spain. While noting that when a state admits into its territory foreign investments or foreign nationals, whether natural or juristic persons, then the state is bound to extend to them the protection of law and the state must assume obligations concerning the treatment to be afforded to them, as this was observed by the court in this case. In particular, an essential distinction should be drawn between obligations of a state towards the international community as a whole and those arising vis-a-vis -vis another state in the sphere of diplomatic protection. By their very nature, the obligations of a state towards the international community as a whole are the concern of all states. In view of the importance of the rights involved, all states can be held to have a legal interest in their protection. They are obligations ergo omnes. Such obligations derive, for example, in contemporary international law from the outlawing of acts of aggression and of genocide as also from the principles and rules concerning the basic rights of the human person, including protection from slavery and racial discrimination. Some of the corresponding rights of protection have entered into the body of general international law, while others are conferred by international instruments of a universal or a quasi-universal character. This observation by the ICJ is of supreme importance for it found that ergo omnis obligations of states towards the international community as a whole derives from the principles and rules concerning the basic rights of the human person. Moreover, it also observed that such ergo omnis obligations are a concern of all states, essentially implying that any state has the right to complain of a breach. Thus, a state could be called to account by other states if acts of aggression, genocide or other grave and widespread infringements upon basic rights of the human person were occurring or stemming from a state's territory. It is also to be noted that even though the list of erga omnis obligations listed out by the ICJ is by no means an exhaustive one. However, three out of these four points 
listed by the court deal with human rights law that is genocide protection from slavery and racial discrimination this shows the recognition by the icj to increased importance of human rights in the international arena and how ergo omnes obligations will possibly be utilized to further expand the scope human rights protection have now we shall first discuss a case which led to the internationalization of the protection of individual human rights in the beginning any international effort to protect the human rights of an individual was considered to be an interference with the domestic affairs of the state however with the changing time a need was felt to extend internationalize the protection of an individual's right in certain situations it became more important when human rights became an international concern from being a national issue and protection of international peace and order was an obligation that required interdependence of the states in its advisory opinion in the interpretation of peace treaties the icj stated that human rights were not solely a domestic affair shielded from the eyes and the interest of the outside world hence giving importance to individual human rights the first advisory opinion is interpretation of peace treaties with bulgaria hungary and romania which was given on 30th march 1950 will be discussing its first phase the questions concerning the interpretation of peace treaties with bulgaria hungary and romania these three countries were referred to the international court of justice for an advisory opinion by a resolution which was passed by the general assembly the general assembly did so after the allied and associated powers accused bulgaria Hungary and Romania of violating the peace treaties and in particular those articles of the treaties which have to do with the security of human rights and with the fundamental freedoms in fact these three states were also accused of non cooperation on behalf of the allied and associated powers in appointing commissions to resolve disputes peacefully as per the peace treaties there were four questions that were put before the court by means of this resolution of the general assembly the first question in the said resolution was do the diplomatic exchanges between these three states as i just mentioned and certain allied and associated powers disclose disputes subject to the provisions for the settlement of dispute contained in the treaties that was the first question now the to this the first argument of the three states was that in dealing with the question of observance of human rights and the question of fundamental freedoms in these three states the general assembly was interfering or intervening in the matters that were essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of these states respectively they alleged non competence of the general assembly to request such an opinion from the icj and was deduced from article 2 para 7 of the un charter which essentially barred the united nations for intervening in matters of domestic jurisdiction of any state the court to this question and this arguments noted that the general assembly justified the adoption of its res- resolution by stating that the un pursuant to article 55 of the charter shall promote universal respect and observance of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race sex language or religion 
The court also noted that the request was directed solely at obtaining certain clarifications of a legal nature concerning the interpretation of the terms of a treaty and thus must not to be considered as a question essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of a state. Here, although the court clarified that the object of the request was limited to legal clarifications, it implicitly departed from the view that the question of observance of human rights is a domestic issue. This implicit shift in the 1950s was truly remarkable. And at the very least, we may say that the proceedings before the ICJ further increased awareness about the human rights violations that were taking place in the states concerned, thereby giving an international dimension to this whole issue. Moreover, even though the issue led to a dead end in view of the stubborn attitude of the governments of the three states, the court pointed to the international uh, responsibility that was incurred by these governments because of their refusal to specifically appoint their commission members. Now, we will discuss three judgments of the ICJ specifically on consular relations dispute. This topic is an important part of international human rights law as it concerns the actions of the state to extend protection to their citizens beyond their territorial jurisdictions. That is, we are talking about situations where allegedly the citizens of one state have committed a crime under the national laws of another state. And now he is being tried without extending adequate protection under the law. All the three cases that we will now discuss have been filed against the United States of America by Prague, Germany and Mexico, respectively on the basis of the optional protocol to the Vienna Convention on Council Relations of 24th April 1963 referred to as the Counselor Relations Convention or the Convention from here on. These cases were brought before ICJ by states exercising their right to diplomatic protection under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations of 18th April 1961 and under the Vienna Convention on Counselor Relations of 24th April 1963. Now first, the case concerning the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, Paraguay versus United States. This application was filed on 3rd April 1998 and we will be discussing the, the order of the same day. This case was brought before ICJ by Paraguay against the United States concerning alleged violations of the Consular Relations Convention of the year 1963 with respect to the case of Mr. Angel Francisco Briard, a Paraguayan national who was convicted of murder in Virginia in the United States. The authorities in Virginia had arrested Mr. Briard, who was consequently charged, tried and convicted of culpable homicide and finally he was sentenced to death by a court in Virginia in 1993 and executed. Paraguay alleged that this execution took place in violation of Article 5 and Article 36 of the Consular Relations Convention 1963. Article 36 specifically in Clause 1 says, with a view to facilitating the exercise of consular functions relating to nationals of the sending state, a the counselor officers shall be free to communicate with nationals of the sending state and to have access to them. Nationals of the sending state shall have the same freedom with respect to communication with and access to counselor officers of the sending state. In clause B, it says, if he so requests, 
the competent authorities of the receiving state shall without delay inform the councillor post of the sending state if within its councillor district a national of that state is arrested or committed to prison or to custody pending trial or is detained in any other manner. Any communication addressed to the councillor post by the person arrested in prison, custody or detention shall also be forwarded by the said authorities without delay. The said authorities shall inform the person concerned without delay of his rights under this particular subparagraph of the convention. Under part C, the article says, Councillor officers shall have the right to visit a national of the sending state who is in prison, custody or detention to converse and correspond with him and to arrange for his legal representation. They shall also have the right to visit any national of the sending state who is in prison, custody or detention in their district in pursuant of a judgment. Nevertheless, councillor officers shall refrain from taking action on behalf of a national who is in prison, custody or detention if he expressly opposes such action. In clause 2 of this article, the convention says, the rights referred to in the paragraph before, which is para 1, shall be exercised in conformity with the laws and regulations of the receiving state, subject to the proviso, however, that the said laws and regulations must enable full effect to be given to the purposes for which the rights accorded under this article are intended. In this case, it was alleged by Paraguay that authorities in Virginia did not inform them of Mr. Briard's arrest and didn't allow him to invoke the provisions of the convention. Mr. Briard was not informed of his rights and the proceedings were conducted for him without any translation. Paraguay government approached the US Supreme Court, the US government and the Department of State against the verdict of execution given by the Virginian court. But its efforts went into vain. It finally raised the matter before the ICJ on April 3, 1998 as the execution was due on April 14, 1998. In its request for provisional measures in the situation, Paraguay emphasized on the inherent right of life of every individual as provided for in Article 6 of the International Covenant on civil and political rights and requested the court to order the United States to not execute Mr. Briard until the court gives its decision. Taking into consideration the urgency in the matter, the court ordered that United States should not execute Mr. Briard pending the final decision in the matter for ICJ. However, the court clarified that its decision will not concern the resolution of international dispute between the states, Paraguay and the US, and not comment on the existence of death penalty in the United States for heinous crimes. Despite the binding order and its nature that was given by ICJ, Unfortunately, the order could not prevent the execution of Mr. Briard, who was executed finally on 14th April 1998. At that point, an out-of-court settlement had been reached between the government of Paraguay and the United States government. The next case is La Grande, which was a case uh, between Germany and United States. Here, uh, will, the judgment in this matter was given by ICJ on 27th June 2001. In this case, two German nationals in the state of Arizona were tried and sentenced to death without being advised of their rights to counselor assistance 
as guaranteed to them by Article 36.1b of the Vienna Convention on Counselor Relations. This provision of the said convention provides that when a national of a foreign country is arrested or detained on criminal or immigration charges, the detainee must be advised of the right to have the detainee's counselate notified and that the detainee has the right to regular consultation with counsellor officials during detention and any trial. This failure on part of the United States precluded Germany from protecting its national's interest. Accordingly, Germany brought this matter before the ICJ. It is interesting to note here that Germany brought this matter to the ICJ on March 2, 1999, just one day prior to the execution. Given the urgency in the matter, Germany requested the ICJ to take recourse to the provisional measures that were provided under Article 41 of the Statute of the ICJ to be read with Article 73, 74 and 75 of the Rules of the Court and issue orders halting the execution of the convict so that a final decision on merits could be taken. The court agreed with Germany and issued an order within hours that said that United States will halt the execution of Mr. Walter Lagrand. However, Mr. Walter Lagrand was executed nonetheless. Now, two important contributions were made to the international human rights corpus by this particular judgment. First, the court held that Article 36, Para 1 of the Vienna Convention on Counselor Relations, it creates individual rights which may be invoked by the national state of the detained person. This observation as the said convention is essentially an interstate agreement and it was not clear if the counselor access provisions would prima facie apply to individuals. Secondly, the court held that by failing to take all measures at its disposal to ensure that Mr. Walter Legrand was not executed pending the final decision of the ICJ, the United States of America had breached the obligations incumbent upon it under the order indicating provisional measures issued by the court on March 3rd, 1999. This, in fact, is a bold measure taken by the ICJ, clarifying that such orders are binding upon states, especially in light of the various questions being raised for the efficacy of any international court. Another case that we shall now discuss is Evena and other Mexican nationals, a case between Mexico and United States. In this particular case, the judgment of the court was given on 31st March 2004. Like the two previous cases that we just discussed, this case was filed against the United States of America by Mexico on violation of the Counselor Relations Convention in relation to the treatment of a number of Mexican nationals who had been tried convicted and sentenced to death in criminal proceedings in different states of the United States of America between 1979 and the time when the application was filed. When Mexico brought this case in the ICJ, a few of its nationals were a week away from the execution of their death sentences. With the provisional orders from the court, the U.S. did not execute the sentence until the matter was decided by the court on the merits, unlike what it did in the previous cases. U.S. raised certain preliminary objections to the jurisdiction of the court and admissibility of the case, which were rejected by the court. With respect to the rights of the affected Mexican citizens, the court held that U.S. has violated Article 36, Para 1, Clause C 
of the convention by depriving Mexico of the right to arrange for a legal representation in a timely fashion. It has violated Article 36, Para 2 by refusing the recon to reconsider the execution of three Mexicans after establishment of the violations in the legal process as given under Article 36, 1b of the Convention. While considering the appropriate reparation in this case, the court found that it consisted of the obligation of the US to provide by means of its own choosing a review and consideration of the convictions and sentences of the Mexican nationals and abiding by Article 36 of the said convention. With this, we end our discussion on these few cases that have been decided by ICJ. Thank you for listening.